There's one question that gets asked by every person who starts out in amateur astronomy, and that's, what telescope should I buy? So in this video, I'm hoping to answer that question. Amateur astronomy can be a really rewarding uh, and inspiring hobby to take up, but when you start to dip your toe into the waters, you'll know that there's a lot of equipment, uh, a lot of jargon, and a lot of terminology that you need to understand before making a decision about what telescope to buy. The first thing to understand is what a telescope does and some of the main features of a telescope. So every telescope will have an objective lens. This is a either mirror or piece of glass that will focus all the light that lands onto it into a single point. The distance between the objective lens and the focal point is the focal length. Now each telescope serves two main purposes. It makes dim things brighter and it makes small things bigger. The focal length determines the magnification and the size of the objective lens largely determines the brightness of the object. Most people will assume that the bigger the magnification, the better the telescope, but that's not always the case. Most objects in the sky that you want to look at are actually quite large, but they're very dim. So things like nebula and galaxies, some of them can be actually larger than the full moon. What you really want is to make faint objects like nebulas and galaxies visible. And this is done by the aperture of the objective lens. Aperture is just another word for the diameter of the objective lens. The larger the aperture, the more surface area is available to collect light. So you'll be able to pick up finer details and dimmer objects. The next thing to consider, and probably the thing that gets overlooked the most by people starting out in this field, is what type of astronomy you actually want to do with your telescope. Do you want to take pictures? Do you want to do astrophotography? Do you want to take pictures of planets, of nebulas, uh, of wide landscapes? Uh, do you want to just observe? Do you want to take it to star parties? Or do you want to do scientific astronomy? Each of these different types of amateur astronomy actually requires different equipment and sometimes very specialised equipment. So understanding what your needs are is really important. The next trap that people fall into is having realistic expectations. If you're going to be looking through an eyepiece of a telescope, don't expect to see what you see in pictures from the Hubble Space Telescope. Uh, don't expect to see colour, don't expect to see an amazing amount of detail. You're more likely to see what's on the left of the screen than what's on the right of the screen. And if that doesn't uh, excite you, then maybe you need to look at getting into astrophotography where you can pick up a little bit more detail. But you're never going to be able to take pictures like this one. Okay, so now we've got that out of the way, we can talk about the main types of telescopes. Essentially there are two different types of telescopes. Refractors and reflectors. Refractors are what you think of when you think of a telescope. They have the glass at the front, uh, long and slim, and they have the eyepiece or the camera at the back. Reflectors, on the other hand, come in a number of different uh, configurations. First, we have the Newtonian type uh, of reflector, which was the first type of reflector made. This has a mirror at the back of the telescope, which bounces uh, the light into a secondary mirror which splits it off to the side and you have the camera or the eyepiece hanging out from the side of the telescope. The other type is a Cassegrain type reflector. Now there are multiple different types of uh, Cassegrains, uh, Ritchie Cretiens, uh, Schmidt Cassegrain telescopes, but essentially they all do the same thing with slight modifications or variations. Essentially they take in the light uh, from the front, reflect it from the back, uh, reflect it from a secondary mirror uh, in the centre and then focus the light into a focal position at the back of the telescope. So like I said before, there are many applications for telescopes, which means there's no one perfect solution that uh, anyone can recommend. It all depends on what you want to do with the telescope. All of these designs have survived because they fulfil some sort of purpose, but they all have their, their drawbacks as well. So, refractors. Refractors are fantastic beginner telescopes and even advanced telescopes. Uh, they require very little maintenance. They're ready to observe when, when you are. Um, they also tend to have a short focal length, which means that they have a very wide field of view. 
which is sometimes good for looking at nebulas and some of the larger objects in the sky. And because of the design uh, and the lack of a central obstruction that you get with the reflector telescopes, they actually generate very high contrast images. Uh, unfortunately, there are some drawbacks. Uh, some of the cheaper refractor telescopes uh, tend to have a problem with what we call chromatic aberration. This is due to the fact that the different wavelengths of light focus at different positions, which means that when you're looking at bright objects in the sky, particularly the planets or the moon, it can have a purple halo around the edges, which is less than ideal, particularly if you're trying to do imaging. Also, because you have to support this large piece of glass at the front, uh, it becomes difficult to get very large aperture refractor telescopes and they become extremely expensive when you start to get into the four to six inch range. So generally they're quite small apertures. So these objects are really good for a grab and go scope, good for star parties, um, good for even beginner astrophotography, particularly wide field astrophotography, um, but they're not very good for imaging really dim objects, particularly galaxies. Newtonian reflector telescopes are amazing value for money. For a very little amount, you're able to get quite a large aperture. Um, it's, so it's great bang for your buck. They also tend to be um, a very good medium focal length, so you'll be able to see most objects in the sky. Uh, however, they do suffer from something called coma. Uh, this is just due to the optical design generally around the sides of the image that you take or the field of view that you have uh, the stars will tend to look a bit like comets this can be corrected but it's another piece of equipment that you might have to buy if you're interested in getting the best views um, also with the design of the newtonian telescope you have all your equipment or your eyepiece or your camera hanging off the side of the telescope which can be an issue uh, particularly with balance for astrophotography also, you are going to have to collimate your optics. You're going to have to align them, which means you're going to have to have specialised collimation gear. So, this is best for uh, a beginner's astrophotography uh, setup if you're willing to put a bit of time in to get to, to learn collimation and, and fix the issues that you're going to have to deal with. Uh, it's, a, it's a great general purpose workhorse. It does pretty much everything that you're going to want to do. Uh, it's not very good for um, the casual star gazer, uh, someone who's a, a lazy astronomer just wants to uh, pick up the telescope and observe at night. You're going to have to uh, collimate those optics. And it's not particularly good for a lot of heavy equipment uh, for astrophotography. So high-end astrophotography is generally not where uh, this telescope is best suited. The other type of telescope is the Cassegrain. Cassegrains tend to have a really long focal length because they're bending the light back on themselves twice. This means that you have a high magnification. Also, these types of telescopes are generally really compact for the type of focal length that you get. Um, also, the eyepiece is always in the same position. It's always at the back. With a Newtonian telescope, uh, if you're trying to observe, you might have to get onto a, a chair or a ladder to try and get to the eyepiece. Uh, but the Cassegrain telescope will always have the, the eyepiece in the right position. However, the long focal length associated with Cassegrain telescopes means that any issues that you have are compounded uh, with this telescope. Uh, variations in the, in the sky, so seeing conditions are magnified. Um, any issues with tracking on your mount uh, are also magnified. So it means that you have very little tolerance to to poor performance. Um, these types of telescopes are really best suited for long focal length astrophotography, um, some planetary photography as well, uh, and also high-end astrophotography, particularly with a very good mount. They're not suited for um, wide field imaging, large nebulas, or some of the large galaxies like Andromeda and generally not suited to new amateur uh, astronomers and astrophotographers. So, the recommendations. So if you're someone who's a casual observer, you want to get out there once in a while, you're not too interested in learning about collimation um, and not too interested in dealing with issues, then you want a refractor telescope. 
somewhere between the 80 to 100 millimeter aperture range and 600 millimeter focal length. If at all possible, you want to get an apochromatic uh, telescope. This corrects largely for the chromatic aberration issue that I was talking about earlier. Now, why would you get one of these? Uh, it's ready to go when you are. It's it's light, um, no maintenance. Also, the focuser has a lot of travel, and this is particularly important when you're trying to put in magnification lenses, things like uh, Barlow's or uh, power mates, they tend to change the focal position and some telescopes will require special adapters and spacers for this, but a refractor is generally uh, fine with the standard equipment. If you're a bit more keen and don't mind about dealing with collimation and going through the learning process, then you need to get yourself a 8 to 10 inch Dobsonian. A Dobsonian is a Newtonian that's already mounted. These are the type of telescopes that are generally recommended for new amateurs getting into the business. Um, it allows you to learn the sky because these are not driven or go-to type telescopes. They also provide amazing views and are reasonably priced. But you're going to need uh, some sort of collimation gear, particularly a laser collimator, um, a star chart to know what you're looking at and to find objects and some patience. Why are you going to do this? This is uh, great to learn the sky. Um, you'll be able to see a lot more objects than you could out of a refractor telescope and you'll get a lot more enjoyment out of it, provided that you're willing to uh, move something around that's a bit heavier and spend time setting up. If you're looking to get into astrophotography and you're a bit more keen and you're willing to take some time, then you really need to get a 8 inch or 10 inch Newtonian telescope. Most people won't recommend for people to start off this way, but I think that if you're willing to give it a go and you're willing to put the time in, then why not? Um, just be aware that what you'll need to get is one that's designed to be uh, for astrophotography. So it will say something like an astrograph or uh, photographic Newtonian. You're also going to need some sort of adapter so you can connect your uh, DSLR. This is generally uh, called a T-ring. You're going to need a laser collimator and a heck of a lot of patience because you will come into issues, you will have to deal with problems. But the benefit of this is that it is a fantastic entry uh, into astrophotography. You'll be able to take images of most targets within the night sky and get to know what you like and what you don't like about astrophotography. Now the one thing I haven't talked about much is the mount of the telescope and in some ways this is more important than the telescope itself. So the next video will be focused on what mount you should use. So I hope this video helped. Uh, so if you went out and bought a telescope, uh, I'd love to hear about it. Leave it in the comments below.